Okay, look what we're making in course 14. A burger, a stuffed burger. Listen, this project, I'm very, very happy about this and super excited. I just finished making it and I love the way it came out. And I do admit, you're probably looking at it saying, oh my gosh, that's so cool. But if I've gotten to know my younger students, I already know in your mind, you're probably thinking, that's really hard, I'm not gonna do that one. It's actually super, super simple to put together. Because if you know how to make a pillow, you're like 75%, maybe 80% already there. And it's basically three pillows. But I'm not gonna say more, I'm gonna save that for the my tutorials. And this pillow has what we're gonna be working with called darts here. Anyway, really simple to put together. You'll be so happy that you've created this. And in the event that, um, I don't know, you don't eat meat or you're just like, I'm not feeling the hamburger, you could change the color of this burger down here, this burger patty to be any color you want. So if you wanna make it like a salmon patty, you could choose like a pinkish coral-ish type color. If you can make it like a veggie burger, you can even make it a chicken burger, anything you want, okay? This project is really um, customizable. You can add more lettuce, you can add more cheese, you'll see throughout the tutorial. But I tell you, this is really exciting. At least I'm excited if you can't tell already. So download that pattern and let's get started. With this really awesome hamburger or stuffed hamburger, as I called it. Um, I have all my pattern pieces cut out here. And for the top bun, I did mention in the intro video that we're gonna be doing a um, dart, as you can see here. So there's gonna be three. So when you fold this over, obviously you'll get two there. And the other one is here. And just in case um, you don't see it on your printout, because sometimes your printer, depending on which setting you have, may cut it off. You just may wanna draw in an inch and three quarter line up there. Okay, so it's really the half of this. Okay, don't stress over it if, if it's not perfect, don't worry. All right, so I have all the pieces cut out. I You may need a seam ripper, but if you don't have a seam ripper, don't worry, I will show you what you can use instead. And that is gonna be for the end when we add on these sesame seeds, which actually I've made out of embroidery thread. So the only color that I had that resembled at the moment sesame seeds was this one that is a little bit braided like this. So don't worry about that. You don't have to get this one. The regular one you get, obviously not black for black sesame seeds. I don't even know if that's a thing, but um, it's usually like this. It's smooth. Mine just happens to be twirled, twisted. Okay, um, so then you need your shears, your double threaded needle. My thread does not perfectly match the flannel that I'm using and it's okay because if I sew in a straight line I'm not going to see it anyway and um, again I'm going to be using a uh, soft flannel because I really like that I love the way the bun comes out with that and this time I'm going to use for the burger a brown a regular brown cotton fabric plain solid for the one that I showed you in the intro I actually used a thicker felt and I, I mean, it inspired me because it really looks like, I don't know, it kind of even looks like a veggie burger. So that inspired me, but you can use a felt, you can use cotton, it's completely up to you. And then my pieces for all my fixings. All right, so um, you know what to do at this point, you know how to pin everything down, but something I wanted to mention, another thing I should say that I wanted to mention of the ketchup is if you like mustard or you like uh, mayonnaise on your burger, you obviously could use these drippings and change it, or if like you don't like ketchup, you could totally change it up. You don't have to keep it as ketchup. Okay, so same thing for uh, your lettuce. If you're really not into lettuce and you're like, I just don't like that in my burger, you don't have to add this. I'm just telling you all the pieces and numbers according to my sample. But if you, uh, you know, want to remove the lettuce or you want to add extra pickles, because in reality, that's what you do with your burger, then make more of these. So two round pickles makes one pickle. So obviously, I think by now you, you know that. So you're gonna need two round green pieces to make one pickle. So just times two. If you want three pickles, then you cut out six. And then another thing I wanted you to keep in mind for the burger bun and the top, okay? Just follow these instruct instructions. I think this is gonna help you. 
when you cut out your bun, all right, you're going to need three of these out of your bun fabric. So this is mine right here. Okay, so I'm going to cut three of these from my bun fabric and then another two to make my burger. So it's basically the same pattern for the bottom bun and the burger in essentially like the shorter way to say it. So you'll need five pieces, three bun color, two burger color. All right, so get started because I know you're busy now. This is probably your first time working with patterns. I just wanted to make sure that you understand how to cut these out. So I cut the fabric on the fold like we know how to do by now. And uh, by, when you cut these out, what you do is you just cut, it, cut out the triangle. That simple. Staying close to the pattern without cutting the actual pattern. And if it goes for a little snippet, it'll be okay. Okay, and that's how you cut your darts. My hamburger pieces are cut out, and I love doing this, actually this project, especially because I see it all coming together. And I wanted to quickly explain to you these round pieces, which I'm sure you already know. Your uh, chosen color for your burger is obviously gonna make your burger. Two of these are gonna make the bottom bun that the burger sits on. And then this top one, because of the darts, is gonna be the top of the bun with the bottom enclosing it. So I want to show you how to sew these darts and it's actually pretty simple. And if you prefer, and as I've mentioned before, if you use a sewing machine, then you go for this on the sewing machine. And I'm gonna show you again, I'm gonna repeat how to so these darts together, but if you're sewing uh, garments, like making clothing, just know that these darts, probably you don't cut them out. You more than likely just sew and leave the actual uh, fabric intact. You actually pinch it. But for products and other things, it's up to the designer and creator if you want to cut it. So I cut it. I made you cut it because it's easier for you since you're a beginner sewer. So I'm gonna do a running stitch and you know all the rules, don't, don't get too close to the edge. A really small, smaller the better, the smaller the stronger, running stitch along the dart. I'm just gonna close it up. Remember, if it scrunches, pull it. And I'm gonna make my way to the end and then do a really good end off. On either side, because it's both sides are the inside. Okay, I'm gonna do two. I already feel this thread getting a little tangly and funny. Here we go. Okay, like I mentioned before, my thread isn't spot on, but matching spot on, but if you sew straight, you don't see it on the outside. So I'm gonna do the same for the rest of my darts. And then you'll see how it kind of forms a little rounded dome. So now that I've sewn them together, you'll see if you turn it right side out that it, it forms a little bit of a dome. So I'm gonna keep the right sides together, right? So I'm just making sure my flannel, which I decided to use, yep, right sides together, and I'm going to pin them. Now, if again, you were sewing garments and you were doing darts, you would have to press the darts, but being that this is not a garment or a clothing, that's going to fit our body, it's totally fine to not uh, iron these darts. But if you want, you can iron them flat, or you can even open them up and, and press them flat. Okay, just pinning. And you know what I'm going to say by now that you are going to have to leave an opening. This time, since this uh, circle is not that large, I'm gonna fit an opening, I'm gonna draw an opening and mark an opening that is probably, I don't know, maybe three finger widths, only because, um, I don't know, I just don't wanna do such a large uh, blind stitch. But you are welcome to make it as large as your hand. So once I get it, pinned it does fit beautifully around as I'm pinning you hopefully you were noticing that I was pushing the fabric in you're gonna make it fit okay you're gonna just like I was sort of playing with the fabric you're gonna make it fit and it will fit 
okay and i'm gonna decide to leave an opening right here okay actually where's my pencil here we go i'm gonna leave an opening right here and i'm now gonna sew all the way around staying at least a half an inch away but if you have it perfectly perfectly uh matched you can get a little closer and you're going to stay in as straight as a line as possible if you've been taking all of my courses you're probably really good at this by now and you don't need to draw a guideline but if you do you are welcome to do so and you're going to make your way all the way around my bun is sewn all around and the back you'll see or the bottom of the bun you'll see is flat but the top has what looks like extra fabric and you want that that's why we added the three darts to give it uh, a rounded sort of dome like shape when we turn it right side out and stuff it so now you all know what I'm gonna say <laughs> you're gonna turn this out like it's a t-shirt through the neck hole you gonna push this out and then um, what you're gonna do is, before you do anything, is you're gonna turn this inside, the edges inside. You're gonna give it a nice press. I won't show you because you know what that looks like. I'm gonna pin, press, and then we will stuff together so I can show you and give you some tips. Okay, so as promised, I've turned in my raw edges. I've ironed them. I actually got away with not pinning them and able to do that. And I'm going to stuff this wonderful bun. So the best thing about making this burger that I learned as I designed it is that it doesn't have to be perfect because think about something, okay? I want you to think about this. You never have a perfect uh, burger. Not, And I'm not talking about taste. I'm talking about the bun. You know, a bun is bread. It's like, it's a little off. It's a little this. It's a, <laughs> it's a little that. Okay. Um, the burger is lumpy and probably never perfect size and shape. So it's okay if your uh, bun doesn't come out amazing. That's totally fine. And neither your burger. That's completely fine. And even if your uh, burger comes out a little lumpy. I mean, isn't a burger right off the grill a little lumpy too? It's a good thing, I think. That's why it's a pretty natural, uh, I don't wanna say natural, almost like organic product that we're making. Organic due to nature, Not. I'm not talking pesticides here. Okay, so as I'm stuffing, I want you to show you how the top is having a bit of a dome shape it's okay if the bottom looks like it's gonna have a dome shape too a little bit it's totally fine because we're gonna press it down onto um our fixings and the bun and i will show you how we sew it together and it does keep it flat okay i'm gonna keep stuffing and then i'm going to blind stitch for the blind stitch and i changed the uh thread color i decided to go with this light yellow because i don't have the perfect matching beige and so I figured you could see, you would see this less. So I'm gonna go under the flap just to begin. You don't have to, but it's a really good way to hide your knot. Okay, behave now, here we go. Under the flap, and now I can start my blind stitch. I'm even gonna move it a little further. Remember, do not come out on the outside of the bun. Stay and sew on the inside flap that I call it that you've folded over and pressed and this bun will stay beautifully closed now how come there we go I'm not pressing I'm like how come I see my thread I'm gonna reach a little higher boom thread gone see I love showing you my mistakes because um I am in no way um amazing and perfect at, at this no one is and I like to show you what I go through and maybe little issues that happen because they happen to everyone. And then I like to show you how to fix them. I think I mentioned it in a past course of mine that no, uh, an instructor that shows you their mistakes is actually a decent and pretty good instructor because it's a good way, it's really a good way to feel, to make the student feel more welcome. Like, hey, she's a human being too. Well, at least last time I checked I was. <laughs> 
<laughs> so notice how I'm continuing the blind stitch and I'm going to continue it all the way down to the ending and do a great end off stitch. Bun, or the top of the bun is complete. And don't worry if it seems a little lopsided and you're like, hey, mine's not looking right. It will look right when you put it together. So th now that that's done and I've done the blind stitch and ended off, you're gonna create the patty and you're going to create the bottom of the bun. And you know how to do this. I won't even go through it. Okay, you're gonna pin these together, line them up perfectly like mine are not lined up perfectly right now. Line them up perfectly, same thing here. And then, um, line them up and pin, put your pins in, leave an opening and you know, sew all around, make sure you do good end off stitches, turn it right side out. Same thing here, pin it, line it together, pin it. Okay, um, leave an opening and sew all the way around. Good end off stitches, turn it right side out. I won't walk you through it because by now you are a pro at this. Completed sewing the burger and the bottom of the bun and I flipped them right side out and I've even gone ahead and ironed the edges in. So now I'm going to stuff them and do a blind stitch. I think you're pretty good by now especially if um, you've taken several of my courses already so you don't need to see me do that. So I will be right back with a stuffed burger patty and the bottom of the bun. I've stuffed and blind stitched my bottom of the bun and my burger and also I have the um, top of the bun. And if it seems like, oh my gosh, this is too high, don't worry. There's um, a way that we're gonna sew all through this that pulls it all down together. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. Um, and even the bottom bun, if it's a little too, you know, stuff, you feel like it's too stuffed, it sits too high, do not worry. I will show you how to take care of that. So um, the, uh, the other thing I wanted to mention about making this hamburger is that I like to keep it um, not stuffed too much where the edges are a little bit um, not even and crinkled because it looks more like a burger. But again, that's my personal uh, opinion. If you want yours to look more perfect, you can. So if you didn't sew a perfect circle and it's like a little off, that's okay because I think it makes it look more like a burger. So moving on. Let's start with these pieces. The ketchup pieces do not need anything done to them, but the pickle pieces actually have to be sewn just like this, but we're not gonna stuff them. So you're gonna sew all the way around, turn them right side out, and blind stitch the opening closed. My pickles, and I wanted to mention that you don't have to be super um, perfect with the blind stitch. It's okay if, even if you leave a straight edge this time because it's going to be sandwiched into the um, hamburger and you're only seeing the edge of it. And I meant to mention that to you before, but I forgot. Okay, but either way, I hope you found that it was actually easier to do a blind stitch on the felt. I mean, I feel that it is. Maybe you get the, you got the same impression and, and experience. So um, we don't need to do anything with the ketchup drippings or mustard drippings or mayo, whatever you made. But here's what I want to do with the lettuce. I want to give it a little bit of curl, all right, to make it even nicer looking. So I have double threaded needle with a close um, coordinating thread. And I'm gonna do a really light running stitch right across here, okay? Just a really light running stitch, but uh, large, large pieces, like large um, stitches, almost like a basting stitch, we call that. Okay, and I'm gonna pull it so it scrunches, so it looks more like lettuce. And I am going to do a an end off right there. But before I do my end off, I wanna make sure I have the crunch the crunchy lettuce the way I want it to look. And then I'm gonna do my my ending off stitch right there. I'm gonna do another one there. Then I'm gonna cut my thread, which is getting caught into the felt fibers. And I will do my magic knot. Really is magic, so how fast that went. And on the same side, because we're gonna put this under, we're gonna flip this and make this our uh, wrong side, even though felt doesn't have a wrong or right side. I'm going to do large stitch just like that. Not much thought to it. Okay, and I'm going to, before I pull, I'm going to make sure I have it, yep, where I want it. There we go. And I'm going to do another end off. Now I want two pieces of lettuce. I love the way it looks all ruffled in my hamburger. 
So um, if you want two pieces of lettuce, you'll do the same thing to the other one. And then my cheese, uh, actually I didn't have enough, so I had to patch it together and to make a, a six inch square piece of cheese. So it's all right, a little bit of surgery was fine, okay? And I'm gonna do my uh, lettuce and then I'm gonna show you how to sandwich the whole thing together. Hey, we're gonna put together this uh, hamburger. I, I really love this project, I'm super excited. So um, what you're gonna do to sew them all together is you're gonna use a larger needle. So an embroidery needle because it has a larger eye and I am using button thread. Now I didn't tell you to get this because I didn't want you to think, oh great, I don't have button thread, I can't do this. But all it is is um, thread that's super, super thick and it literally says on it button thread. Obviously mine has a little bit of a broken spool there. All right, but you don't need that. But I do use this even when I make the flowers sometimes and I'm using a really thick fabric because it doesn't snap, it's super strong. But instead what you're gonna do, okay, is you're gonna use your embroidery thread. All right, whatever color you have, it doesn't matter because you're not gonna see it. And when you thread your needle, you're gonna single thread it. Okay, you're just gonna put it through the eye of the needle and obviously if you pull, it will fall out. So you'll be careful. Every time you pull the needle, you'll hold the eye of the needle so that the thread doesn't come out. All right, so let's get started. This is the bottom of my bun. I'm gonna start with that. Okay, make sure uh, you don't start with the top of the bun because the top of the bun is the last piece we add. And I am going to, it doesn't matter which is the front or back, I'm gonna find the center and I'm gonna push the needle all the way through. Be careful you don't get your finger. It is okay if it is not directly in the center. Now you saw that, mine came right through. That means my knot is not big enough. So I'm gonna redo it. Remember what I told you, right? I show you all my mistakes. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to triple knot this guy. I'll show you. <laughs> but if you have, if you have your, um, if you have the uh, embroidery floss, it may not go through. That's a bit thicker. Okay, there we go. Here we go. Now, this is here, and once it's there, I felt that it stopped, okay? I'm gonna go back down, all right? And I'm gonna go through a few times, and I'm gonna show you why. I gotta create a strong hold here, because this is gonna be the base that we're gonna keep going through. And I don't want that thread to fall through. So I'm going to do it one more time. It's okay if you if you don't go through the same hole. It's totally fine. Okay. Or the same point, I should say. And yes, you are going to see a little bit of, a, of an indent in the center. That's fine. And normal. And I pull. Now I'm going to give it a tug. I feel, all right, that's good. I'm good. It's not going anywhere. Okay. You don't have to end off. It's totally fine. Next is my burger, right? your bun, then your burger. I love this lumpy burger. <laughs> so I'm also going to go through the center, all right, and come out through the other side. Do not worry if it is not directly in the center. It's fine. And I'm going to do the same thing now. And now is when you're really going to be applying some hand skills. All right, I'm going to go first through the burger. I'm going to catch the needle out this way, hold on to it. Then we're going to go through here. I'm just going to do this one once sorry i took that out of the video see what happens i get so comfortable so i put it through the burger and then i'm gonna put it through the bun all right put it through the bun and then i'm gonna pull and then again through the bun and this is the most challenging part meaning it's really not that challenging so you are already there see how it's pulling I'm gonna go through here. It's kind of like doing a humongous button, right? Okay, through the center. Boom, pull, tight. I love it. This kind of looks like a donut, but let's not even go there. We're not We're not doing donuts yet, okay? Um, here we go. Looks good, right? Bun and burger, okay? Now, when I have it nice and tight and I feel like, okay, I like how it is right now, it's pressing down, it looks good, I am going to, with the best of my ability, I'm going to do a nice end off stitch. And you saw I took a lot of fabric there. It's totally fine. I'm going to do two to secure it in. If you feel like you need to do three, you can. 
and as I take up my skin. <laughs> All right, here we go. I feel two is good, but you judge yours if you may need three. And now this is like super strong and it doesn't come apart. Okay, so now I'm gonna add, oh, I was gonna add my lettuce. No, I want the cheese nice and melted on top, right? So I'm gonna add my cheese. You know, you can leave these separate and make it like a toy, but if you want to give it to a, a young child to play with and stack, it's actually a fun idea. Just make sure they are under three so that you don't um, fall into the, you know, uh, chance and turn any of these pieces into choking hazards. So just make sure they are not under three. They're over three, I meant to say. So none of these pieces can be uh, a choking hazard. Okay, so I did a few end-offs there, but I'm gonna tighten it off now. There's no need to go through with the cheese or any of the other pieces, I'll show you why. So now we got the cheese looking good, right? Layering. So now comes my lettuce, and I'm gonna make sure that the knotted end is down because I, I just don't wanna see it, okay? Doesn't matter how you choose. You don't If you don't mind seeing the knot, you can do that, but I do. All right, I'm just going to do um, just a light stitch right in the center to attach it to the cheese. All right, somehow I grabbed it all, so I just did it in one shot. Don't even ask. <laughs> Unintended, but it worked, okay? So lay it there, and then because I want two, see how it sticks up? That's great. We are not trying to get anything perfect here. The messier, the better. Lay this one right on top. First, I'm gonna stick my thread through. Those perfect burgers you see in pictures are actually done by um, professional food stylists. That is a career and a very cool career if I don't say so myself. Well, I'm not a food stylist, but it looks really cool. And they are not edible, those amazing perfect burgers. Okay. Um, now I'm going to add my, uh, drippings. It doesn't matter how or why, like there's no rhyme or reason. I should say, actually, I'm going to stick this one under here. Kind of looks nicer under there. Okay. And I'm just going to tack it. There's not going to be a lot of sewing, like serious sewing, but you do have to tack these, um, pieces or these drippings of ketchup on well because you don't want them to fall out. The rest of the pieces are gonna be tacked on great and wonderful and tight, but these um, pieces of drippings, whether it's mustard, ketchup, you name it, have to be tacked on a bit more. And if you see what I'm doing, I'm just ensuring it so that it doesn't fall out. Now I wanna put my dripping on the other side. So I know that, so before I do that, I'm thinking I don't wanna waste the thread, meaning then I just have to re-thread. It's not even for the waste. I know I'm gonna place it there. I'm gonna think where I'm gonna place this. Yeah, I might not, mm. maybe I should have made three. <laughs> no, I think I'm gonna place one here. Because I have the thread here and I, no, I'm not. I'm not. I will do an end off. You see, don't I always tell you that making the decisions, the final aesthetic decisions, the prettiest, the prettiness of it is always sometimes most challenging. So I'm going to do that because I don't exactly want my pickle there. I think I want my pickle here. And of course, I have to pick my pickle. Pick my pickle somewhere else. Maybe here. Okay, and I'm going to tack this in place the same way. I'm gonna go from under. Actually, let me make sure they're in the right place. I'm gonna put the bun on top. Yeah, there we go. You could see them. This is all I did. I made sure I could see them and they were sticking out because I want them. I'm gonna go under so you don't see the knot. And I'm just gonna make sure I tack it onto the lettuce. And I think it's grabbing the cheese as well. I'm making really large stitches because I know a young child is not going to play with this. If you are giving this to a, you know, a younger child, a sibling, whatever, as a gift, 
Um, make sure you tack these on really well, really well, because you don't want them to pull them off and um, God forbid choke. We don't want that. Okay, this just fell out. Very good, as promised. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to do two. One was probably enough because when you do an end off in felt, it's actually really strong, but I just want to secure it in. Okay. And then I'm going to put the pickle, the other pickle on the opposite end. May, or maybe not. Maybe I kind of... Ah, oh, decisions, decisions. There we go. <laughs> I'm going to tack this one on. And I'm, I'm still using the button thread because it's thick. If you don't um, have enough or you decide not to use your uh, embroidery thread, that's totally fine. Use regular thread. And no one's going to see these stitches, so it doesn't matter if the thread doesn't match. But of course, matching thread is always the best thing. Or co coordinating thread. Now, these are the dilemmas. I should have given myself more thread. But this is not a hamburger dilemma. This is me not re-threading my needle at the right time, okay, to add more thread. And this is why you always end off, and I didn't pay attention to my own rule before you uh, do a blind stitch. This is difficult now. Before you run out of thread, I meant. Okay, I did this three times, and we're going to call it a day. It's not going anywhere, but I didn't go through and make the knot. Now for the last thing, okay, the very last thing is um, adding the bun. And let me show you how to do that. I went ahead and finished tacking down the uh, pickles and also the ketchup piece that I didn't, or the ketchup dripping that I didn't tack down. All right, so now we're gonna put the bun on, which is the second to last thing. And the last thing actually is to embroider the sesame seeds if you choose to add them. So on the back or under the bun, I should say, there really is no front and back. Under it, you're gonna do a stitch. And you're gonna pass over that stitch again. Here's what I mean. So you're just gonna go over it again. And it's pretty strong and secure. I test it, good, okay? So what you're gonna do now is you're gonna go through all of this. Trust me, you're like, oh my gosh, what? It is easy. Okay, I'm gonna first go through the bun and then the burger. You're just gonna do this once, okay? Now notice how I'm taking my time. If you want, you can get your um, thimble. You don't need it but you can get it and then you're going to pull all right this is the part that makes your burger not as sit as high but if you want it sitting high then you could just start and tack here instead of all the way under okay but i i'm telling you this looks challenging it's really not so now i'm going to go back through and because we're using button thread and or your um uh, embroidery thread it's not going to snap that's the beauty of this okay and I'm going to catch it again. Am I directly in the center? I don't think so. Okay, so that's all right. I'm totally not in the center. I'm just making sure this doesn't slip out. And I'm going to pull, right? And as I pull, it kind of shortens the stack just a little. But it also, it also um, keeps it all together. So now I'm going to grab. Now, every time I say I'm going to grab under, this is where I'm grabbing. I'm making like a stitch right here, okay? I'm going to grab under. I'm not going to come all the way through to the top because then the top will have a dent in the center and we don't want our bun to look like that. So I'm going to grab under. Okay. Remember what I said. Here we go. I'm going to grab under. And I'm going to flip it around. As this slipped out, totally normal. I'll keep all my little mishaps in just to show you it's normal. Okay. And... Go away, green thread. Okay, I'm gonna pull. Then as I pull, I'm gonna grab under again. And remember where I told you that grab under is, okay? It's right in the center. It does not have to be exact, 
My apologies, does not have to be exact, okay? Because no one's gonna see that and I'm gonna pull. Now, if you're using reg regular thread, you would have never gotten up to this point of pulling. It would have snapped way before. And again, this is the reason why we're using either our embroidery thread or our button thread. And now I have it at a good position, right? So I'm not gonna go through anything else again, meaning like the bun and the burger. I'm just gonna end it here. I'm gonna go under on the bun. I'm gonna grab a good point. Now, as you're doing this, it may have come a little bit loose. So I'm gonna give the loop a pull, then just pull tight. Then I'm gonna finish it off by grabbing again. Just, I'm gonna do it right under the bun near the center i can't totally get to the center it's fine you just want it to um hold okay and now i am going to trim the thread and you're going to check out your burger and decide mm, am i loving I am. <laughs> I am. It's really like a cartoon sort of burger, you know, it's like exaggerated. So we don't mind that the edges are a little crinkled. I mean, this just adds character to the bread and to the actual um, burger. So now let me show you how to put on these awesome sesame seeds if you choose. If you recall, I told you I'm using this embroidery thread that's um, a bit twisted and it's pretty, it's shiny. Um, it's what I had closest to the color of sesame seeds. So of course you may be using the typical embroidery thread that looks um, like this and obviously possibly not black, but more of a color that's similar to a sesame seed. So let me show you how I uh, thread a needle. Let me put this under there so you see better, not white and white. And what I do is I lick my fingers, making sure my hands were clean first, and I kind of squeeze the uh, thread in a sort of flat, if you will, position, and then I gently glide the eye of the needle over it, okay? Because there's a few pieces of thread that you just want to pull through. And if you find that you can't get this through, you probably have a needle whose eye is not the good a good size for that embroidery floss. So I'm gonna cut a pretty long piece, or I shouldn't say too long, but the length of my arm. I am going to do the magic knot. And just once I'm gonna show you why I'm gonna go under the bun. I don't want this knot to end up out here. If you don't mind seeing the knot on the outside, go for it. Oh, I could be picky like that, I mind. So just once when I start, or maybe again, if I run out, I'm gonna go from under just to hide the knot. Runaway needle, okay. This also helps to squish down the um, bun. So a really simple way to make what looks like a sesame seed is just to make a stitch and come right out, if you remember from embroidering in the same spot, that's one. And I kinda like, I like to do it twice. You could leave it once, but I, I wanna do it twice. Go in the same points. And then you're going to use, go round, around near the same point and move to another position. That's why I made my uh, embroidery thread a bit longer. And I'm gonna go here, right? One. I decided to do two. I'm gonna show you what happens if you pull too tight and how to fix it. Okay, I'm gonna stick one here. I, I like to keep it really random in, in the way they land, like all different directions and sizes, because really um, sesame seeds really are like that. There's no method of putting the sesame seed on the bun when they're baking them, so I want that kind of messy look. So let's say you're making one of these sesame seeds, right? And you pull too tight, like this. Let's say you're going like this, right? And then you pull too tight. And you're like, oh God, like what? Okay, it happens, right? So this is where I use my seam ripper. This in here cuts this area. So I'm gonna flip it around and pull it out, right? I'm gonna loosen it up. But if you don't have a seam ripper, you can use anything. You can use the um, 
a larger pin or a larger straight pin, I should say, to let that up, okay? Or anything, you could even use the back of another pin head that fits in there. So you don't need a seam ripper, but it's nice to have if you are gonna continue sewing and creating many more projects. So I'm gonna go along here and create these really cute sesame seeds, which I've learned not to be super picky and accepted the fact that they are white and not beige. <laughs> and I will see you as soon as I am done with these sesame seeds. One thing I wanted to show you is before you start a new thread on your needle, how to end off. You kind of don't end off for the sesame seeds. So I'm doing the second stitch because I, I want to do two. And I realize that I don't have enough thread left. So I go in, back in, and I do the ending just like this. Right, I just pull it through and I snip it close to the fabric and then the end ends up in the stuffing and it will not come apart. Unless you literally pull it out, it, it won't come apart. So I'm gonna continue and add the rest of my sesame seeds on. The, the stuffed hamburger is officially complete. I really enjoyed this project. I hope you did too. And remember, it's totally customizable. You can change the fabric of the burger patty and uh, the color of it. You could change this to mustard or mayo drippings. Also, lettuce, no lettuce, pickles. You can add onions. You can do anything. Just adorable. Hope you enjoyed it.